<clears throat> Ulakut. On behalf of our president, Johanna Slamp, and the Nanatsivu government, I want to thank the organizers for inviting us to the, this year's Arctic Circle Greenland Forum. This is my first visit to Greenland, and I'm awe-inspired. It's so beautiful here. Before I get into my formal presentation, I thought it might be useful to provide an overview of our homeland, Nunatsivut, which means our beautiful land. How our territory was established, and a little bit about our government, and how we reached this point in history. For thousands of years, the Labrador Inuit have managed to live from the land and sea. Our attachment to the land, sea, and our unique culture and our language has defined us as a people and continues to guide us as we evolve in a modern society. Guided by the Labrador Inuit Constitution, we envision a future where Labrador Inuit are self-sufficient, practicing our unique way of life, culture, and traditions in, a healthy, in healthy Nanatsivu communities and within sustainable environments. Our journey as a people and as a government has been a long and difficult one. The formation of the Labrador Inuit Association took place in 1973 and its incorporation two years later laid the groundwork for us today. From filing our first land claim in 1977 to the start of negotiations over a decade later, through ratification process and the signing of the Labrador Inuit Land Claims Agreement in 2005, we now have a strong government structure that has earned the respect of other uh, many organizations across, the, across Canada. Did it switch? <clears throat> we can attribute much of our success to the land claims agreement, which sets out in detail of land ownership, resource sharing, and self-government. Our settlement area totals 72,500 square kilometers of land and 48,690 square, square kilometers of sea. Sorry. The agreement provides Labrador Inuit special rights related to traditional land use in this area. Within the settlement area, 15,800 square kilometers is designated as Labrador Inuit lands, or LIL and it's owned by the Labrador Inuit. The agreement also provides for the establishment of the Torngat Mountains National Park consisting of 9,600 square kilometers of land within Lisa. Our land claim is roughly the size of Ireland. Ooh. Okay, sorry. So um, in the red, it's our lil. Labrador Inuit lands, the beige is Lisa, Labrador Inuit settlement area, and green is the Torngat Mountains National Park. And this is a photo taken inside the Torngat Mountains National Park. <clears throat> Our government structure, <clears throat> sorry, the Nanasivu government was established on December 1st, 2005. It comprises of 18 assembly members and operates at two distinct but connected levels, regional and community, with five Inuit community governments. The Nanasivu government has responsibilities and rights similar, similar to other governments, such as planning for sustainable economic development, protecting and preserving Labrador Inuit culture and traditions, and implementing health and social programs on behalf of our beneficiaries. Unlike other governments, the Nanasivu government is a consensus government. Elections are held every four years. These elect the elected officials represent 7,200 beneficiaries of our land claim agreement. Our, our department, our sorry, excuse me, our government is comprised of seven departments the Department of Education and Economic Development, in which I am the minister, strives to foster positive climate in an attempt to provide long-term economic stability and sustainability. 
for an Anasivut and the beneficiaries of our land claim agreement. We also provide post-secondary education and training to support our people. We have on average 20, 2, 250 students per year that are funded through our programs. This is our assembly building in Hopedale, our legislative capital. It's one of the nicest buildings in all of Labrador. Economic development. With respect to economic development, our goal is to create an economic environment that encourages self-reliance, prosperity, employment, and entrepreneurship. We focus on research, short-term training opportunities, business planning, and community development. We also manage an Inuit business registry, which has 108 Inuit businesses, 20 in Nunasivut, and 88 outside our territory in other parts of the province and Canada. While we continue to face many challenges as a young government, particularly with respect to social issues, we have made some significant progress in improving the health and well-being of Labrador Inuit while at the same time creating employment opportunities. We have converted our isolation, limited capacity, and minimal economic development into assets rather than view them as barriers to economic development. With lessons learned from 30 years of negotiating our land claims agreement and recognizing the opportunities associated with being an Inuit self-government in a resource-rich region with access to the Arctic, we need to leverage our development approach. Partnerships lead to success. This allows us to determine our economic needs and utilize collaborative development to ensure meaningful outcomes. The Labrador Inuit Capital Strategy Trust. We transformed our development corporation from a social enterprise to a business entity in 2010 with the establishment of the Nunasivut Group of Companies. NGC. NGC, through the Labrador Inuit Capital Strategy Trust, LICST, operates at arm's length from our government. This intentional division of politics and business allows the trust to make sound business decisions and operate without political interference. The mandate of the trust is to create wealth for Nunatsivut. The trust reports to our assembly annually. Here is a flow chart of their corporate structure. The blue boxes are 100% Inuit owned by a group of companies. The black boxes are joint ventures and partnerships. And Universal Helicopters is represented in the orange box is a limited partnership. The LICSD has mindfully diversified its business lines into 12 businesses, includes fishing, construction, transportation, both air and marine, commercial real estate, and logistics. These companies operate on a majority-owned basis, ensuring capacity building, employment options, and decision-making authority. These companies, which operate primarily in Labrador, with some focus on Newfoundland and Quebec, have the potential to expand their operations further. Projects range from local service operators, ferry service, marine shipping, remote base camp operations, fixed wing and helicopter services to multi-million dollar contracts at the Voices Bay Nickel Mine. Partners include national companies and neighboring First Nation Inu bands. NGC is one of our main employers and employs about 300 people. I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to skip over. Voices Bay is a uh, 6,000 ton per day open mine in northern Labrador. Um, it's, it's near our community of Nain, and we have 45% um, of the workforce in Boise's Bay are Inuit, 210 out of 468. We'd like it to be higher. We are, and Boise's Bay is going underground in the next several years. And this is a shot of Boise's Bay. Our fishery, the fishery is an integral part of the Labrador Inuit culture and Nunasivut's economy. 
and we have fished inshore, midshore, and offshore for many years. Historically, we fished uh, cod, salmon, and Arctic char, and now we're moving into uh, shrimp and snow crab. And this is a shot of one of our fish plants in Makovic. And in conclusion, we continue to expand our economic goals, lessons of the Nazi vote in economic development is that it's meaningfully important to utilize existing assets as a partner, as a means to ensure capacity building and sustainability. What we learn from the past will shape where we go in the future. The days of domination and colonizations very much eroded our cultural identity, way of life, and stripped us of our natural resources. The, those days are over. Economic development in the Nazi the Nazi vote must support our people and provide direct benefits to our communities. By doing so, we have learned that we can achieve long-term gains and provide direct benefits to our people. The bottom line, if a company wants to come into the Nazi vote for resource development, they have to come as a partner with us and hire the Nazi vote beneficiaries and not bring in their own people. As a government, we are determined to improve the social and economic well-being of our people and our communities. And we want to forge partnerships to reach that goal. Nakamika. <laughs>